about the Spectre pipeline, the Sable Trail pipeline that's scheduled to come through Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. Um, and last night on a conference call, Denora Hall from uh, Albany said, um, if this project was denied in 2009, why do we need it now? And that's sort of one of the questions that we need to have answered. Why do we need to have this pipeline now? I'd like to begin by recognizing our elected officials who have joined us. We really appreciate you taking time out of a busy Saturday to come and, and meet with um, citizens who are concerned about this. We have Representative Ellis Black, Chairman Slaughter, and um, Commissioner Crawford Powell are with us today. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming. Um, we have landowners um, who have pipeline, the pipeline, they're on the path of the pipeline. Could all the landowners who have been contacted by Sable Trail or think that they're on the pipeline raise their hand? Okay, that's, that's quite a lot. Um, are, are, would any of those... Well, we don't know. <laughs> okay, well that's, that's, we're hoping to be able to answer that question. Um, would any of those landowners like to stand up for one minute and tell us your name, where you live, what, what your concerns are? We have about um, 10 minutes allocated for that. Oh wait, one, I have one question first. Is there anybody here from the pipeline? Sable Trail? Is there, are there any Sable Trail representatives here? Because we have a place for you if you are here. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> 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 well, they're here. So, <laughs> so uh, landowners on the, on the pipeline. Beth. Okay, stand up here. It's all right. I live in Williston, Florida. Uh, we have a small horse farm. I am an attorney in town, and uh, I have an even smaller law office. And they sent me letters starting in August. I had no idea what it was. And to this day, as of yesterday, no one in town really knows what's going on. They're like surprised by it. And they want to run a 36 inch pipe, on probably 700 feet from my bedroom. And it's like, I feel like it's like sleeping on a bomb. And just Thursday, one of them went up in Texas. That was a 10 inch pipe. They evacuated that whole town. Um, and it wasn't a good evacuation from what I've heard. It was uh, scary. And so I don't think we need this so that Spectra can make all sorts of money and ship this liquefied gas. They'll liquefy it in the ports and ship it to China. That's what their aim is, not to supply another million people in Florida. They didn't spend $3 billion on a pipeline to give cheaper energy to a million people in Florida. I don't buy it, so that's where I'm coming from. We filed a petition with the Energy Commission in Florida. We'll see what happens with that, but uh, that's our story. We just found out about this, basically. Thanks. Thank you. Here? Oh, Larry. Larry. Uh, I'm Larry Rogers. I, I've got a uh, farm uh, in the Clydeville area. I've done some checking this week on uh, impact of values to, to, to property. Uh, can be up to as much as 50 percent. So <clears throat> that's pretty concerning to me, along with the safety of it. But 50 percent is a pretty good impact. But I will tell you, I read two articles that were published by Gaslight. Carol, Company. stand up and introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carol Singletary. Um, I read two articles just trying to get some feel for. No, what they may do now. This isn't, you know, this company. They're just articles I found on the internet. Two different gas companies felt the impact of a gas line on a person's property was zero. So I don't know what this company feels, but these were two different companies, and they are kind of like birds of a feather. They sort of flock together. So uh, <laughs> that was real interesting that they don't believe that it in negatively impacts land values. So don't know. We'll have that. You know, it's more to come with this company, but um, I don't think anybody's going to get rich off of it. 